Welcome inside a Paycom Center. I'm Paris Lawson sitting alongside our very own Royce Young. And Royce, this game has followed a similar script of really the last three games of this series where it has been a low scoring back and forth battle. The Thunder maintaining kind of an arm's distance, keeping itself within reach of this game. Dallas just ultimately a little more shot making down the stretch. Yeah, and you know, this felt like a, in a lot of ways kind of a similar game to what we just saw in Dallas the other yeah. night, game four. A big difference in this one is the Thunder weren't able to get to the free throw line the same way that they were in that game, only 10 free throw attempts. Again, the Thunder struggle shooting from the perimeter only you know making about 25 percent of their threes which you know is a shocking number Paris because as we've seen with this team all season you know very there is variance in shooting but consistently speaking over stretches the Thunder have been one of the best shooting teams in the NBA especially from the three-point line and the Thunder generated a lot of good looks tonight we can obviously see what Dallas is trying to do defend Yes, the party continues. Welcome back, everybody. Funny you should ask Justin on fire pitching a perfect game. $1,800. You are doing it, man. I love how you're working it. Get a whole lot sweeter. You get through this round unscathed. We had another five grand. Season below 30% in tonight's game. But credit to OKC for their ability to keep this game really low scoring, leaning onto their defense just to keep themselves within arm's reach. Royce, what have you seen on the defensive side for the Thunder that has allowed them just to keep this game low scoring? Well, the Thunder are doing an incredible job of the second and third efforts, really helping the helper all over the place. Lou Dort obviously uh, has such a handful matchup and a guy like Luka Doncic and Lou has continued to compete throughout the series. But the Thunder have done a pretty amazing job of limiting Kyrie Irving, whether that's Kaysen Wallace or J-Dub uh, with their assignment on him. But the Thunder have done a good job in this uh, in this series, in this entire postseason on the defensive end. Really have never uh, let go of that. It's just offensively there just hasn't been that same sort of consistent punch. There was a, a stretch in this game, Paris, where Thunder, I think, went down 18 in the fourth quarter yep. and were able to get it back, I think, to eight. Mm -hmm. And there was a few spots there where it's just one more bucket and the Thunder had possession yeah. that you really felt like this this thing might turn for them and you know your margin for error when you go down big is very very small and the Thunder were not able to capitalize on those opportunities they had. Coach Dagnall talks about flurries. The Thunder felt like they might have been just one or two little flurries yeah. away from potentially turning the tides of this game but going back to the first quarter of this game Royce the Thunder got out to a pretty strong yep. start offensively a start we hadn't seen from them over the last few games and we saw a little bit of a lineup change Isaiah Joe stepping into the starting lineup for the Thunder tonight. What were you seeing early on for OKC? Yeah, you know, I thought the Thunder did a good job of, you know, obviously getting Isaiah Joe involved early, hit an early three in this one. Um, you know, the ball movement was good early, and the Thunder clearly, I think, wanted to try to try to create a little bit more space. It was, you know, I think a little less so about what wasn't working and more about what they could really try to benefit from and taking advantage of with what Dallas was doing defensively. Um, and, you know, they made the change with Isaiah Joe starting instead of Josh Gideon. And then Josh off the bench, I thought, actually played really well points, in his men. It's yeah. 11 points and was really effective himself. Yeah, really good coaching there from Thunder head coach Mark Dagnall. Speaking of which, let's go to the press room now and hear from Coach Dagnall right now some were just okay um, but the thing I was encouraged by offensively was I just thought we kind of looked like ourselves again stylistically I actually thought we made pretty good progress in terms of attacks you know there was times in games uh, two three four that it just felt like we were in a headlock offensively and we we're just like um, jammed up against their defense and tonight I thought there was way more flow I thought there was way more driving kick there was way more um, you know stuff that we want to get going so it's it's taken us obviously a couple games in the series to like calibrate that um, but I thought we were kind of there tonight and maybe missed a couple plays maybe missed a couple shots but um, I was actually pretty encouraged by the process tonight in terms of improving through the series I thought we improved offensively tonight I thought defensively we maybe uh, took a little bit of a step back and credit them they did a great job the defensive stuff does any of that uh fall into the category of uh, Doncic getting more free tonight or was he making more difficult shots uh, similar to the ones that he has been getting? Yeah, I mean, that's what's hard about, you know, talented players. It's hard to hold them down game after game after game. Um, so I thought he got it going, obviously, tonight, uh, especially in the second half. Um, but, you know, I, it wasn't like egregious breaks downs uh, on that end. It was more little details that you know, we've been pretty tight on that we maybe weren't as tight on in a couple of possessions tonight. So the combination of that and then uh, our offense struggling is what led to that. Or just obviously you swap 
Josh for, for Isaiah in the starting lineup. What, what went into that decision, and what did you like from that look, or what did you think of that look generally? Um, yeah, I thought, you know, first of all, it uh, gave us a chance to, you know, get back to some normal attacks uh, on offense, shake the game up a little bit uh, with the opponent, um, and try to generate some flow to start the game. I, I liked how we got off to the start offensively, especially it also gets Josh – uh, second unit minutes where he can play make a little bit when Jalen, Shea, Chet, you know, those guys are starting to stagger out of the lineup. So I actually thought it could benefit both units. Um, we'll take a look at it and, and make the best decisions for game six, but that's what the gist of it was. Yeah, and, and obviously, like round to round, the defenses are going to look different. I guess the, the looks that maybe Jalen and Chet would expect are going to be different. Just how much do you feel you maybe prepared them for, for what this round could have looked like in terms of the shots they would get that they usually do and just you know how they would you know slip into those yeah I mean Jalen and Chet are really good players really important parts of our team um you know the thing I'll say we're going through this obviously it's our first playoff run it's their first playoff run um you know so we're everything's a learning experience for everybody um the thing I'll say is like in the playoffs because of the nature of it you're you know high stakes games well scouted same opponent high level opponents there's no player, regardless of where they are in their career, that doesn't struggle in the playoffs at different times throughout the course of a series. I think Doncic and Irving are a great example of that. I mean, they've had a hard time getting it going uh, in the series until tonight, and they're as you know, experienced as anybody. So um, we're going through it for the first time. Um, we got to learn from it. But those guys are going to bounce back. They're really, really good players that we have a ton of confidence in. Um, and we got to continue to work to try to find ways to get them you know, in rhythm and get them involved. Yeah, Mark, uh, better better production in the paint tonight, but still not where you guys normally are. Um, what do you feel like has been the like one of the major issues for you guys not being able to just get established there in the series? Yeah, I mean, credit Dallas. You know, I think they're doing a good job schematically um, of trying to slow that down. A lot of it is, you know, Lively and Gafford being in there um, and just doing a good job of bumping, you know, the low defenders out. Uh, we looked pretty hard at that the last couple of days with the team and, you know, modified a couple of our attacks that I actually think was pretty effective tonight. It maybe didn't yield a score or a clean play every time. But again, I thought watching the game, we kind of looked like ourselves offensively from at least a stylistic standpoint, like optically. Um, obviously, we didn't score 120 points tonight, so we would have liked to. But um, I did think we made progress, you know, in the gaps between the last couple games on that end of the floor, and now we got to do that again as we go into game six. And then, paraphrasing here, but earlier this season you said something along the lines about all open shots aren't created equal. Um, how, do you feel like, how do you feel like the not being able to get established in the paint has affected you guys' shots, uh, shots, not shot selection, but like missing those shots because it's not you guys playing inside out like you normally are? Yeah, I mean, I think maybe in the other games that was the case. I thought tonight we were able to kind of generate some flow and some rhythm. There was way more possessions, again, that, like, we attack, ball sprayed out, drive and kick, extra, extra, maybe another attack. Like, our kind of normal flow, um, I thought we had a lot more plays like that tonight. And so that's what generates rhythm. Um, and that's all we can control, you know, is to continue to improve on both ends of the floor. So now we got to go back to the drawing board um, make the tweaks defensively, obviously, and, and tighten the screws there. And then offensively, um, learn from the pictures and, and take another step forward. But I do think we're, we're in the right direction there. 40 is a pretty good amount of three-point attempts for you guys. Um, probably even pass up another handful. Um, but, I mean, it sounds like you liked what, what you guys got offensively. Do you think you could have taken more, should have taken less? Where are you at on that? Yeah, I, I'm careful to say I loved a 92-point offensive night. Um, but at the same time, uh, I did feel like we were, like, bumping up against a, a, some hurdles there to, on the offensive end of the floor with the way they were playing us in the last three games. And I thought tonight, again, we were able to, like, find some cracks. Like, we just we, we made them a little bit more uncomfortable. We had them in rotation a little bit more. We made them a little more late. The guys, uh, I think you know, are learning through the series and recognize the right reads on a lot of plays. I think there's something to be desired there. We can take another step forward, but I wasn't like bursting with joy with 92 points, but I do think, like I said, we're on the right track in terms of how we're attacking. And now we just got to like continue to get that better and trust that good shots will fall. 
You disrupted a couple of those lob slams late in the game, but the average fans driving home saying, what in the world's going on with, I mean, eight or ten lob slams, it seemed. Well, what do you say? Um, well, we never like lob slams, uh, you know, going down in the game. If it's in transition, you know, we certainly don't like them in that part of the game where they're, like, outrunning us. That happened a couple times. I mean, those are the plays where you don't have a great shooting night that, you know, your margins are really, really thin, and we've got to uh, be better in that area of the game. But um, the other thing is, like, they've got a good team and good players that puts pressure on you and, and puts pressure on the backside of your defense. And so um, some of those are the cost of doing business over the course of 48 minutes. But, you know, I thought, like I said, our offense took a little bit of a step forward tonight. From a process standpoint, our defense took a little bit of a step backwards. Mark, the, the reasons you gave for making the change in the starting lineup seems like those could have applied earlier in, in the series. Why why now? Why before this game? Did you decide to make that change? Um, I mean, at the end of the day, just like considering all the information uh, before every single game and, and treating game as its own, every game as its own life, um, I just wasn't comfortable doing it up until now. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I'm making a lot of different decisions. They're not all going to be right or wrong. You know, it's I'm doing the best I can, but I thought it was the appropriate time to take a look at that, um, mainly to try to, like I said, get us off to a little bit more of a rhythmic start offensively and then also get Josh uh, in more of a playmaking role where he could play to his identity in the second unit. How do you think Josh kind of responded to that and, and played with that second yeah, unit? Yeah, really well. You know, I, I was impressed by him. I mean, he started every game of his career so far, I think. Um, and so that's a very different feeling for him. He's never come off the bench. And um, I was kind of factoring in that he would be like calibrating, you know, to a degree when he got out there. And that wasn't even the case. I thought he was like very much uh, in character, obviously scored it, uh, had his floater going, uh, banged a three, you know, so had some good minutes for us there. So I was impressed by how he handled it. You mentioned the razor thin margins in the postseason. What's sort of the balance of like getting the guys to not settle, but also necessarily understand that a better shot might not come just with how great the Mavs have been defensively. Yeah, I, I think that's, you know, we try to work on that throughout the course of the season as well, you know, and, and build confidence in the team to take uh, the types of shots we're trying to generate in the postseason. You know, there's a little bit more prep, a little bit more physicality. Closeouts are a little harder. You know, it's just the nature of this time of year. I think that's why you see the scores, you know, down where they are right now and in most games, certainly in this series for us and them. Um, so, you know, we just got to kind of get used to that. But I thought, like I said, offensively, we took a step in the right direction tonight. Thank you, Coach. Myers. All right. Thanks. Yeah, really interesting to hear Coach Dagnall there talking about the improvement on the offensive end tonight for the Thunder. Don't be fooled by the 92 points up on the board. That's the cost of doing business in the playoffs, as you heard Coach Dagnall talking about. But we did see that blender that the Thunder mm -hmm. typically gets to offensively. We saw that a lot during the regular season, not so much during this postseason and against the Dallas Mavericks. What were you seeing on the offensive end for OKC? Yeah, I loved how Coach Mark put it, how kind of games three and four felt that like the Thunder were in a headlock is yeah. sort of how he said it. And look, again, and OKC is very competitive in those games, but like we talked about off the top, is the Thunder ball movement was better. It's just they didn't pay them off at yeah. the rate that you would want to. Again, shooting variance is a thing. The Thunder would have shot the ball well in this game. We'd be talking about it a lot different outcome and a lot different things uh, as they got through this one. Well, one guy who had a really good offensive night tonight, Shea Gildas Alexander, another 30 point performance from him. He is now at the podium addressing the media. Let's listen in. Um, but I felt like we played like the right way offensively tonight. Um, got a lot of good looks that we usually make and just didn't go in. Um, you live with those results. Like we had the right intentions, made the right plays, right passes, got good looks. Um, just didn't go our way. That's what it felt like. I don't know exactly what it is. When you have a change in the outfits, uh, a starter like you know Josh been starter all season. Mm -hmm. Does that throw you off at all? Any, any getting used to a new starter in the lineup like that with Isaiah starting instead of uh, Josh? Um, I didn't feel like it. Uh, Coach has been like, he's mixed up lineups so much this year. Um, we've had guys hurt a couple times this year, so we've gotten used to like different lineups, I think. That has to do with some of it. Um, but we have like a everybody be ready to do what they need to do tonight mentality. Um, so it didn't really feel different. Mark pointed to kind of what you did about just the way that the offense seemed to flow a little bit better, but he felt like there were some. Uh, just detail plays that you guys missed defensively that you hadn't missed mm -hmm. in the previous couple games. Um, what were some things defensively you feel like might be controllables for 
for game six? Um, it felt like a rebounding, um, for sure. Uh, I feel like every time we like were about to make a run, they got like an offensive rebound. Um, but beyond that, I'm not too sure. Those are just the things that it felt like. I'll have better answers once I like watch a film and stuff. Um, but that's what it felt like. Say, so obviously, you guys took 43s tonight. Just how much of what Dallas did defensively do you feel influenced? You know, those attempts. Um, yeah, they make you move the ball, make you make multiple efforts offensively, um, make you spray the ball. Their bigs are, are parked down there pretty much the whole game. They, like, bump out and stuff like that. Um, but I thought we did a pretty good job of attacking and moving the ball. Um, the looks just didn't really go in. And obviously, you know, playoff series are designed to, you know, have deep scout deeper than you would have in the regular season. So, you know, guys like, like Jalen and Chet, they're, they're under a, a different microscope than the regular season. Just what have you maybe told them throughout the series as, you know, some of the looks they may be enjoying in the regular season are being taken away? Um, I haven't really told them anything or needed to. I felt like um, both of those guys are high IQ basketball players um, and guys that put their heart, their hard hat on every night and do whatever it takes for us to win. Um, I'm not worried about those two in a playoff basketball atmosphere at all. Is this overall, like over the course of the series, is this as congested a paint as you've had to attack, would you say, in your career? This game or in like the series? The whole, the, how they're defending and packing the paint. Um, hmm. It's it is very congested. Um, I feel like I see that a lot though. With that being like my main thing offensively. Um, but yeah, there, it's definitely an emphasis for sure, and has been a a lot. And I think that's why we are passing and spraying out to the the, the three point line. Say on a night where you guys only have eight turnovers, don't let them go. Cr don't let them go crazy on on the offensive offensive glass and just seemed like you guys did all the little things. It just felt like a night that shots just didn't fall. Um, for the most part, yeah, that's what it felt like. Uh, there's probably things, there's not probably, there's 100% things we could have done to probably still get the game. Um, well, look at those. Don't want to make excuses. You can't always rely on shots falling. Um, yeah, don't want to make excuses. We'll, we'll look at those things and try to clean those up for next game. So that even if those shots don't fall, we still have a chance. The odds of falling behind and going yeah. on the road for a perhaps clinching game uh, are against you there. What about the mood of the team and just the, the mindset of going into a game you just have to win down there? Yeah, um, it'll be fun. Uh, our mood won't change. Our mentality won't change. Um, it's one game at a time. We wanted to win this game tonight as bad as we're going to want to win the next game and the next game. Um, so I don't think it'll change too much. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Shaq. Tough. Oof. You know, that answer right there just goes to show how much this team loves competition, loves competing. They view these challenges and obstacles as opportunities. And Shea Gildas Alexander going up against a game three environment or a game, sorry, game six environment down three two in American Airlines Center. He sees that as that'll be fun. Yeah, and you know I think it's one of those things like we talked about the other night, even coming off the big win. Momentum in playoff series is kind of an overrated thing, yeah. and there's two days off between games five and six now, so there's an opportunity to get to zero and zero, yeah. and you just have to kind of reset yourself and get ready to play the game. And that's what this Thunder team's going to try to do, get ready for game six. There's still a lot to play for. This season is far from over. <laughs> that's right. Still more games to play. We're going to send it back to the press room now and hear from rookie Chet Holmgren. Taking that away, so. Uh, you know, we just got to get back and film and, um, you know, see where we can be better for next game on that one. Uh, and, and we're going to do that tomorrow. Chet, the looks that you guys got offensively from behind the arc seemed like um, you guys took quite a few and, and got good ones. How would you feel about the process on offense despite the results? Yeah, um, obviously – it wasn't perfect. It's never going to be perfect, but uh, you know, I feel like we did a great job of uh, playing our style of basketball and and trusting each other, like we've done all year. And um, you know, even when it wasn't going our way, we continued to trust each other. Uh, it led to a couple of runs, but uh, we came up short in the end. Chad, obviously, we we talked all series just about the kind of microscope you're under 
in a playoff series, just game to game, the, the level of scout, everything, your tendencies, everything. Just how well do you feel you were prepared coming into the series on that front, and just what's that look like, you know, to this point? Um, I feel like I've prepared, uh, you know, to the highest level that I can. Uh, you know, and it didn't start just before the series. You know, the whole season, you know, I've been doing everything to be better for the next game, and uh, that process didn't change leading up to the series. Uh, and it's continued throughout the series. Uh, you know, I just got to continue to be better and be better for next game to give us a chance to win. What is it about? Go ahead, Joe. What is it about the Dallas defense or just the, the playoff setting, just the, the microscope we talk about, that makes it hard to maybe pop offensively from, from game to game? Um. Well, I mean, the biggest thing is it's a really good team on the other end, and, uh, you know, they're putting their work in just like we are, and, and uh, you know, they're not going to let it be easy for us, and we wouldn't expect that. Um, so, again, we just got to, uh, you know, put in the work on our end, and hopefully it puts us in a good spot. How challenging do you find it that you're such a, a big option when it comes to the pick and pop, but also you're really needed on the offensive glass and just kind of rebounding? Do you, do you kind of feel like you have to be in two places at one time? Or is it really challenging? Uh, yeah, it's um, quite hard being in two places at once. Um, you know, it's just kind of trying to find a balance, um, you know, knowing that you have to do both and uh, you can't do both on every single play. So, uh, you know, just trying to read the game and, and see where I can be effective and help make a win in play. And if that's popping or uh, being in position to, to rebound or maybe even both sometimes on plays, depending on how it plays out, um, you know, just trying to do whatever it takes to, to win. You guys have done a really good job limiting Luka, uh, especially as a scorer uh, throughout the series until tonight. When, when he gets in that kind of rhythm and you can see, you know, he's feeling good early, what kind of pressure does that put on you guys defensively? Um. I mean, it puts a lot of pressure on you, uh, just like any other really good player. Uh, you know, he's, uh, you know, he's gonna read what we're doing and and how we're trying to take him out and and limit him, and he's gonna find ways to counter that. And when he counters that, we're gonna try and counter that ourselves. So it's like a, a continuous cat and mouse thing. And um, you know, credit to him, he had uh, uh, he made great plays tonight. Anybody else? Thank you, you know, before the game, Coach Dagnut was talking about rookie Chet Holmgren, and one thing that he said that he learned very early on from Sam Presti was that Chet Holmgren had an elite mindset, and I think you get a little bit of a glimpse of that when with his reaction to how this game unfolded in that press room. Yeah, absolutely. Again, I mean, it's uncommon maturity that we've seen from this group all season long when they've faced adversity or needed a resilient response. We saw that in game four in real time, and now this team is obviously trying to turn the page and kind of feature that again but you know I thought Chet uh, brought up something that was uh, pretty intelligent there just talking just about the offensive element of the the process over the result and mm -hmm. it, it felt like the attacks were good you know that's kind of what we've been hearing from Thunder coaches and players coming out of this from Paris is that it, you know the, the process of the game was in a much better spot and even you know I think taking 43s in the game while that might seem like a big number that to me is a very positive sign yeah. because the Thunder were not able to generate those perimeter looks in the way and again like we were just talking about it felt like they even turned down a few that they maybe could have uh, they could have taken so to me that is you know if you just add a couple threes throughout the books I know I know that that's an easy thing to do but yeah. you give Isaiah Joe a couple more because he had great looks you give Cason Wallace a couple more this game all of a sudden gets real close real fast if these guys knock down just a couple more of those rhythm threes they had like we mentioned a l another flurry in that fourth quarter and this could be a very different outcome here tonight but really encouraging sign to hear that the Thunder took a step forward offensively tonight gonna need to carry that over into game six in Dallas all right, stick with us here on Thunder Playoff Post Game. We got more coming for you when we come back right after this. Education as a whole, it's not just subject to what's in the building and the brick and mortar building. It's everybody in the community um, fighting for our students, fighting for our teachers, and fighting for our profession. We're molding young minds into growing the next generation, and I think that's awesome. I wanted to be a part of the school, not only as just a teacher, but as an active leader, where many voices become one. This is where we're supposed to pick up the new employee. 
Are you sure this is where he lives? That's what it says. Huh. Seems like an odd place. Huh. What is that racket? Hey, what are you doing? Get in the van. Did you shower today, Rubble? Ugh. When's the last time you shaved? Airco Service is proud to be the official service company of the Thunder. Welcome back to Thunder Playoff Post Game. We're coming to you live from downtown Oklahoma City and Paycom Center, where we just wrapped up Game 5 of this really competitive series between the Dallas Mavericks and the Oklahoma City Thunder. The Thunder dropping Game 5, and we're breaking down all the action here, and we brought in a good friend of ours, Steve McGeehee of News 9. Steve, you were just in that press conference. You heard from Coach Dagnall. You heard from Shea. You heard from Chet. What were your kind of biggest takeaways from what you heard in there? What I, what I caught my eye was they're not they don't seem concerned or worried like this series is over. They're very positive. They like what they saw on offense. Uh, defense could be a little bit better. It's just the way they're approached. They're professional. They're in a, now in a must-win situation, and they're not, they're not shying away from it. They know what they have to do. They've won in Dallas before, and uh, they have to do it again or the season's over. But, uh, you know, they had that lead early. I think they got up 8-2. to two. Isaiah Joe knocks down his first mm -hmm. three in the game, and then Derek Jones gives them a 9-8 to eight lead. He goes 6-6 six for six in the first half. We were worried about P.J. Washington, and, and Luca got his game going. And then Jones goes 6-6. Six for six. I think Jones just missed only, yep, yeah, only missed two shots in the game. We didn't expect that. He had 19 points. But uh, Thunder, defensively, I thought they were pretty good. But the shots, you know, 10 out of 40, from the three-point line, not good. Also, free throws, mm -hmm. they were, what were they, 23 out of 24 or 24 out of 25? 23 out of 24. Yeah. Well, they only, what were they? Only they were 10, I think. Yeah, they were one. 8 out of 10, so yeah. they didn't get any many points from the free throw line. Not that the free throw line and the lack of three-point shooting was the difference in this game tonight. You know, Steve, one of the things that it sounded like the players, like you're talking about just kind of the the positivity that, that was kind of coming out of it, but you know, Coach Mark just kind of – talked about it felt like that the Thunder looked a little more like themselves mm -hmm. what did you see offensively in terms of kind of getting the ball moving around obviously the shot making wasn't there but did you see that that looked a little bit more like Thunder basketball yeah, the, the offense was moving up I mean the ball movement was great I thought it's just they couldn't get that shot to drop and uh, it's got to be frustrating when Dallas comes down and scores but you got to go back and battle it through and you, sometimes you need those three-point shots to go in and you know and that kind of hurts you a little bit when you're on the defensive end you kind of get frustrated what's going on at the other end and so you got to play even tougher defense. And then Luca's hitting his shots finally. And uh, as I mentioned, Derek Jones. But I thought the offense was pretty good. And Mark was pretty positive about that offense. You know, hey, we're, we're, we're getting there. We're finding the holes. Now we just got to finish at the uh, inside or you know, hitting the three. Yeah, and on Another guy who really stepped up, I feel like, in the fourth quarter is Jalen Williams, who is actually in the press room right now at the podium. Let's listen in. Good looks from three. What did you like about the looks, and, and did it just feel like they're they're just missing, or did you feel like you could have had better process? It's probably gonna sound crazy, but because we didn't shoot it well, so. But I thought our offense was really good. I thought we tried to do the right thing the whole game. Didn't make shots. I thought our defense was pretty good too. You know, obviously we had a couple mistakes, but I think apart we had to kind of foul at the end, so you know they got. Got to give credit because they made free throws, but you know we're holding like 95 around there. Just didn't make shots, to be honest. I thought we had a good progression of offense throughout the whole game. Um, kind of looked like our, looked like ourselves the whole game. Just didn't make shots, so it's kind of disappointing. Uh, I mean, a lot of that's me too. Like I didn't I didn't make shots I normally make. Um, I haven't really the whole series, so it's kind of frustrating. But it's just one of those things you kind of stick with, and you know eventually they'll fall. But I think our process was good. Shay, I'm not Shay. Dub on a night where I look like Shay. <laughs> <laughs> on a night where your guys only give up seven or only have seven turnovers, they don't, you only give up 104 points. It seems like you guys did all the little things correctly. Did it just feel like a game where you guys just didn't hit shots? I mean, there's always more stuff you can do. Yeah, right now, yes, because that's just that's just what um what's kind of presented. You know, we shot from the like the floor for three. Yeah. There you go. It's just one of those. I thought we, like I said, I thought we had a really good approach defensively, offensively. There's always going to be stuff you can clean up on both ends, but I thought our process was good the whole game. Um, you know, they made a couple plays down the stretch. I think kind of had some bad bounces. I think Shea blocked PJ's 
three in the corner, it hits offside the backboard, he gets a dunk. Um, some stuff, you know, it's kind of out of your control. Um, but yeah, I thought our process was good the whole game. Just, just lost. When it feels like that out there, like, what do you feel like some things that you guys can do to like overcome that feeling when you when you feel like all these other things are going right and you set the process of the offense is going right? Just don't give in to that theory. Um, just kind of keep sticking with it. You know, you got to trust each other. Um, you know, we're gonna live and die trusting each other throughout the whole game. And you know, I think the biggest thing is not hang your head when it's not going your way. I thought, we, like I said, you know, I thought we did a good job kind of sticking with that process the whole game. Um, and, you know, some nights it's it's a sport, you know, some nights you can do the right thing the whole game and not win. Dub, Dub obviously playoff series are designed to, to take away a team's top scoring options, but, but how well do you feel you were prepared for just the way Dallas was going to try to take away some of your looks throughout the series? Uh, I think for the most part I kind of knew what they were going to do. Um, I think tonight, you know, I think I got guys a lot of open looks. I think I got myself stuff, and, you know, I want to keep saying the same thing, but, you know, we just missed shots. Um, still trying to take what the defense gives me and figure it out. You know, every game's a different adjustment as far as, you know, where my shots are going to come from or, you know, kind of when to go. So, you know, we're trying, you know, different things too. So just trying to trust that process and go through and still be aggressive and kind of find my looks. But, you know, like I said, it's a series. You know, they're making adjustments the same way we are. And Mark was saying before the game just that you guys were talking and he was saying that you, you think you're getting the looks that you like, but you just haven't looked like yourself. Just in this series specifically, you personally, what's been toughest about trying to look how you looked all regular season? Um, I think just adjusting to their adjustments. Um, you know, like I said, you kind of just got to play within what we're trying to accomplish as well. Uh, I think I've been doing a good job of kind of making the right read. I think sometimes I probably should force it a little more. But other than that, it's just one of those things. Um, I'm big on kind of playing within the team like we've been doing all year. Uh, we've had a lot of guys kind of step up through that, making the right reads every time. So it's just something I'm going to continue to do, trust them, and you know, also find my spots. Um, Dub, you mentioned some of those things about just forcing extra shots. Do you feel like they're sort of like using that against you guys in terms of like your unselfishness as a team of like wanting to make that extra pass? It's probably more of a them question, but I think for the most part, I think our progression is good. You know, we're, everybody's taking what the defense has given them. You know, I think tonight we did a really good job of not forcing anything. Um, I thought we cut well, moved the ball well. Um, I think there was times we could probably Every person could probably pick out a time they would kind of be a little more selfish. But other than that, you know, we're trying to play the right way. And like I said, you can play the right way the whole game and still lose. That's just kind of how it is. And I think we can make a little more, a couple more defensive adjustments and make shots. And you've mentioned that you're getting to shots that you like. They're just not going in. How do you sort of deal with that frustration without, like, letting it get into your head so much that it's like an extra part of the game? Um, I put up so many shots and work really hard on my game that it's – it's not something I'm going to put my head down for not making shots. Um, just trust your work. I understand it's basketball. Um, it's a little frustrating, but it's not It's not something that I'm going to stop shooting or get into those spots. You know, like I said, I do a lot of work behind the scenes in the summer and, you know, all that good stuff even during the series. So um, I'm not going to stop doing what, what got me here. But, you know, it's it's annoying, but it's one of those things that, you know, the team kind of needs me to continue to do it. So. Did, did the paint feel a little bit more open tonight or, or still pretty congested? It felt more open. I thought we did a good job kind of getting them in rotation a little bit more. Um, we were making the right reads, making the right plays, cutting when we were supposed to. I thought we got out in transition, just didn't convert. But, yeah, I thought we were able to kind of get the paint open a little bit. The effort, that you're, uh... the effort that you're putting out on defense, do you think somehow that's kind of affecting your offense a little bit, in nah. your opinion? Mm -mm. I work I work out for that. Um, and I enjoy playing defense, so I don't really see it as like a taxing thing. But um, not really. Saturday, it'll be the first time you guys as a group will face a closeout game. Um, how do you guys feel going into the to game six? Confident, like we have all year. Um, I think uh, there's a lot that we can take away from this past game. That was really good. Uh, I haven't been able to watch the film yet, but just how I feel right now. I think we got a lot of stuff that we wanted to do accomplished and just kind of lost the game. We know it's a tough task going over there and, you know, winning, but now it's kind of like that first to best out of three series, and that's how we're treating it. Anyone else? You can go 
last one, Joel, in the corner. Deb, you, you, you said you feel like there's times where you could force more. Just have you felt yourself being passive in a series? Um, I think sometimes maybe getting caught up in trying to create for others the whole game. And um, it's kind of a balance that, you know, I'm still trying to figure out, especially, you know, like I said, when there's adjustments made the whole game, it's something that you just got to, it's like a touch and go kind of thing. Um, I think kind of realizing that a little quicker in the game would help. But other than that, um, just trying to get to my spots more, uh, kind of take what they're giving me. Thank you, cool. Is the poise and the maturity of this young Thunder group, and you heard it from Jalen Williams there, who probably hasn't shot up to his standard that he usually does throughout the season, but you heard him there just keep trusting the process and stick to the same approach that he's had all season long. Steve, you've been with this team all season long. What is it about this team and, and their maturity and they, their composure? They do not act their age. They're, they're all grown up now. And, you know, Chet and Kaysen may be a rookie, but they've played in, what, some 86 games. They're not rookie. They're now in year number two. So they're picking <laughs> a value of experience right now. But it's just amazing. Just their facial expressions, you know, they don't look like this is the end of the world. They yeah. look like, hey, we won in Dallas before – we can do it again. Dallas won here twice. Why can't we win down there twice and bring this game back to Monday for game number seven? But Jalen Williams, slow offensively in the first half. You probably guys probably talked about it, four points. And then he had eight there in the fourth quarter. Some of those shots, if they if they go in on Saturday, I think this is going to favor the Thunder. But there's other guys, too. Isaiah Joe, I think, was two out of eight. Mm -hmm. So he's got to make some more shots, too. But we would love to see J-Dub get that offense going. His defense has been great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's giving Kyrie, you know, fits and making Kyrie work for all the buckets. But if he can get that offense, those shots to drop in the first half, that's going to favor the Thunder, I think. Kind of exactly what you were saying, Steve. It was funny when j was getting asked about the question. It was, you're facing your first elimination game. He actually kind of smiled, kind of like, it was almost like he was weirdly yeah. excited about it to kind of experience that sort of thing. But, you know, kind of speaking to this team and, and what they're going to be going up against there, how do you – you know, how, how do they translate this kind of positivity offensively, even though the 92 points wasn't great, but then taking it on the road? Because that will be something that might be a little bit more challenging. Sometimes it's easier to do it on your home floor. As Mark said, they took a step forward on offense. It's just it's, now it's come down to making more shots, and that's what it comes down to. Dallas had four more threes. They won by 12. Yep. There's your 12 points. They, they, I know. <laughs> My teacher would be proud there in fourth grade. And they had two more free throws, too. Oklahoma City's got to make more threes shoot better, shoot at least 50% and get more to maybe more to the free throw line yeah. in that next game to force a game here on Monday night. Uh, last thing for you here, Steve, I wanted to ask what you anticipate seeing from Dallas because as much as the Thunder want to win, you yeah. know Dallas is going to want to close the, the book on this series. What do you anticipate seeing from Dallas down at American Airlines Center? Well, they're going to play like veterans, Luka and Kyrie, but the pressure's on them too because the last thing mm -hmm. they want to do is come back to Oklahoma City for game number seven and try to win three games in a row on this court. The odds were pretty long on that. So pressure's on Dallas, too, to close this thing out because if they don't, advantage Thunder, I think. Yep. Yeah, and the Thunder, obviously, very hungry to keep this going and get it to a Game 7. Steve McGeehee, as always, thank you so much to your, for your time and your insights, as always. You're welcome. All right, we're going to take a short break here, but when we come back, we got more here inside of Paycom Center from Thunder Playoff Postgame. We'll get you all squared away, everything you need to know going into Game 6.